once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. Will you pack it in? That's old news now, snapped Henry to James. James laughed and Henry fumed out of the sheds. If ever you were to be introduced to Henry, the first thing that would come to mind would be Henry's tunnel. Henry had been shut up for several days in the tunnel for disobedience and stubbornness by the fat controller. The story had now become quite famous, but whenever the subject was brought up, Henry grew very defensive and very shaken up at the thought of his tunnel. Most of the engines thought Henry was too sensitive about the topic, but Edward wasn't convinced. There he goes again, teased James, all up tight over his tunnel. There's more to that tunnel than what Henry's letting on, contemplated Edward. Gordon sniffed at the thought. You're not suggesting something out of the supernatural, grumbled Gordon. Because if you are, then you're being ridiculous. Edward said nothing, and no more was said about the tunnel. But one cold December evening, Boko was returning to Napford with a delayed passenger train. A multiple unit had failed, and Boko had been sent to rescue the passengers. He had been given clear signals and was trying to make up for lost time. As he approached Henry's tunnel, he tooted his horn loudly. As he roared into the darkness, Boko and his driver could see a figure standing on the line at the mouth of the tunnel. Someone's on the line, cried Boko. Break, Boko, break, shouted the driver. The driver applied the brakes fiercely. The train screeched along the rails as Boko put all his weight against the train. One moment the figure was inches away from Boko, the next it was gone. Boko looked around in bewilderment. As the passengers leaned out of the windows, the guard ran up to the cab. You are right, old chap, he called. There was something on the line, explained the driver. Not like a young woman. I saw her too, agreed Boko, but she vanished into thin air. The passengers were beginning to become impatient, but once the guard explained the situation, they all stayed respectfully quiet. The driver and guard went along the train, checking to see if they had hit the woman. They found nothing. All the same, they agreed to report the matter once they reached the next station. Bogo, who was still in a state of disbelief, rolled cautiously out of the tunnel. That night at the sheds, Boko told the other engines what had happened. How extraordinary, exclaimed Duck. How odd, barked James. Indeed it was, confirmed Boko. As soon as I blinked, she disappeared. Gordon wasn't convinced. You must be seeing things, Boko. Henry had stayed unusually quiet during this discussion. Edward had noticed. Do you know anything about a vanishing girl? He asked innocently. No, certainly not, came the sharp reply. Henry once again grew defensive. Well, I do, said Edward. Henry's face turned pale as everyone became intrigued. Her name is Mary, began Edward. She haunts Henry's tunnel from time to time. Nonsense, scolded Gordon. Shh! Hiss the engines. Edward continued. Long before the railway was built, there was a village on the hillside. You can't see it from the railway line, but it's still there. A short distance from the village was a well, which supplied the villagers with fresh spring water from deep within the hillside. The story goes that Mary was the bonniest woman in the entire village. She used her beauty to get whatever she wanted, in more ways than one. Unfortunately, her husband discovered she had been unfaithful to him, and overwhelmed by jealousy and fury, dragged her to the well and threw her down it. He left her to die. She was never found again. Years later, the railway was under construction, 
I helped to build a tunnel through the hillside where the well once stood upon. Mysterious goings-on soon occurred. Tools going missing, lanterns blown out, and dynamite exploding by itself. Workmen would exchange stories of a young woman haunting the tunnel, and that the railway was disturbing her place of rest. So frightened were the men, that construction was cut short, and only one line was laid through the tunnel. As time went by and traffic increased, the fat controller made the decision to construct a second tunnel with double track. He wanted to double track the other tunnel, but workmen refused to go near it. The engines were in awe over the story. But how come we've never seen this ghost before? asked James. The workmen say she only makes herself known to a kind and forgiving soul, so to help lay her to rest, replied Edward. Henry had been looking at his buffers throughout the story. He took a deep breath and confessed to his friends. I have met Mary before. The engines gasped in surprise. When I was locked up in the tunnel, she came to see me. But I was young and too frightened to speak to her. She seemed disheartened that I wouldn't talk to her. I wish I did, for now I haven't seen her since. So that's why you're so edgy about the tunnel, concluded James. The sheds filled with an awkward silence. Gordon muttered a quiet, Good night. No one responded. All the engines seemed to be lost in their thoughts. The mood didn't change next morning either, as they set out to work. Boker whispered to Duck. I wish I had been seeing things now, he murmured. Duck agreed. A few weeks later, the subject of Mary and Henry's tunnel had been forgotten. Until one misty evening, James had been redirected with his coal train. A portion of Bear's goods train had become uncoupled, and half of it stood outside Henry's tunnel. James had to use the main tunnel to bypass the obstruction. As he steamed towards the tunnel, he noticed what appeared to be a young woman standing next to the brake van. It's Mary's ghost! shrieked James. He shot forwards in panic and slipped on the rails. The driver held him back. Hold on, boy! he cried. No, no, I want to go, I want to go! James wailed. He raced through the tunnel and shot out of the other side. He didn't stop until he reached the next station. Bear was there with half of his goods train. Sorry about my trucks, he said. The driver says they broke free, but the guard is convinced something uncoupled them. James began to shiver in terror. Bear seemed confused. You look like you've seen a ghost. James let off steam indignantly. That's not funny. News travelled down the line. Henry was certain it was Mary. Edward decided to take matters into his own buffers. He made a plan to speak to Mary. You're either stupid or brave, grunted James. Oh, senile, groaned Gordon. Edward steamed boldly away to the yards to collect some empty trucks. It was dark when he reached the yards. He was steaming well, but Edward had a plan. As they departed, Edward began to hold back. Come on, old boy, encouraged the driver. You were running fine a minute ago. Edward didn't reply. He was forcing steam out of a small leak. As they carried along the main line, Edward was losing steam, and gradually the pace began to slow. The fireman looked at his watch. We've got to make way for the wild nor'wester, he called to the driver. The driver noticed the signals ahead. I thought so, he said, shutting the regulator. The signalman's sending us down Henry's tunnel to let the express pass. 
Edward's plan was beginning to take action. As he limped towards the tunnel, Gorn flew past on the other line. Edward feebly entered Henry's tunnel. The driver and fireman had to admit defeat, and Edward was brought to a gentle stop just short of the tunnel exit. <sighs> we'll have to wait here until we can build up more steam, sighed the driver. The guard climbed into the cab. Fireman, you'll have to go back to the signal box and alert the signalman we are temporarily stuck. Driver, bring a lantern and help me put out detonators on the track, he said. And with that, the three men left. Edward was alone. But he wouldn't be for long. It had only been five minutes, but Edward heard footsteps on the ballast. The steps grew louder. Edward waited until the sound was at his cab. Then he whispered softly, Hello, Mary. A pale young woman appeared in Edward's view, and she walked slowly in front of the locomotive. She didn't say a word. She looked longingly at Edward's old eyes. Edward smiled at her. He wasn't afraid. This is no place for a young lady such as yourself to be in, whispered Edward. It's cold, damp and dark in here. You should be with your loved ones. Mary began to smile. She seemed to be holding back her tears. Please don't cry, pleaded Edward. What is done is done. It is all in the past and time has moved on. And I think it's time you should too. Mary gazed lovingly at Edward. She patted him appreciatively on the buffer and faded away. Just then the crew returned. Who are you talking to? called the driver. You don't believe in all this Mary rubbish, do you? No, not at all, murmured Edward sadly. Edward never told the engines what happened that night. But he kept himself in solitude and separated himself from the other engines for several days. The story of Mary and Henry's tunnel seemed to vanish along with the existence of the ghost, and the engine soon dismissed the thought of such supernatural occurrences as just a story. But Henry knew otherwise. He knew that Edward had been the kind and forgiving soul she had been waiting for. And so, whenever Edward or Henry travelled through the tunnel, they always give a moment's silence for Mary, the figure in the tunnel.